When developing applications using the Active Framework, the chances are they are big applications with lots of user interfaces. They could be configuration screens, option windows, monitoring windows, status windows. And the issue here is that because they're all asynchronous actors, can very quickly lend itself to having asynchronous windows individually appearing. An example of that is the chat window project that I've been talking about throughout this series. If we run the chat window and launch a couple of nested actors, so the individual users of the chat window, you can see that by the time we've launched four users, the screen is already starting to get quite full and it's not very neat or tidy. So I'm going to show you how we can use subpanels with the actor framework to combine these UIs together for a much neater user experience. So let's close this example and actually open up the tools in an options window. Here we have an example of what's essentially lots of nested actors and we can choose which actor is going to be shown based on the category we select. So if we click on front panel, this sub panel here is showing the front panel actor. We click on next, we go to the block diagram actor, controls and functions palettes actor. Essentially, we're just choosing between different actors to show on that sub panel. I've actually implemented the chat window project into a sub panel UI. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how it's done. Okay, so I've loaded up my sub panel chat window project. Let's just run it and see what it does. So again, we'll run the launcher. And now we've got two UIs that appear. We have a sub panel user interface for the chat windows. Either we have the chat room server. And I've decided to keep those two separate. Now, when we launch a chat window, instead of a chat window appearing as a separate window, it gets added to the chat window sub panel user interface. You can see I've launched six chat windows and they've all appeared in this list. I can still send everyone a message and everyone in this chat window will receive that message. I could send a message from user one to user four. Click send, so I sent user four a message. If we go to user four, user four received that message and the others didn't. Okay, so the functionality is exactly the same. And that's the beauty of Active Framework. I've been able to change how the user interface behaves without changing the underlying functionality behind the scenes. So if you remember back from one of my previous lessons on model view controller or developing user interfaces in the Active Framework, that's what I'm referring to here. As a little bonus, I've also added some extra functionality. So I've been sending messages between user one and user four. So perhaps we want to use those separately. So I've added a right click menu of pop out window. So user one can be separated and so can user four. So now I can use user one and user four like the old style user interface and while keeping all of the other actors contained in the sub panel. Pretty cool, right? Even the shutdown behavior is the same as uh, before. Cool, now let's check out the code itself. I've created a brand new actor called a sub panel user interface, which we will see here. And let's check out actor core. We have four controls. The first one is a list, and that's going to list out all of the chat windows that we've launched. The second control is just a string indicator, which is going to display the name of the chat window we're showing. Then we have the main event in the center here, and that's our sub panel. If we have our close item at the bottom. So let's have a quick look at the block diagram for the actor core. The first thing we're doing in this block diagram is just keeping a note of our references for the chat selector. So that's going to be the list on the left hand side and the sub panel itself. So we have the list box reference and the sub panel reference. And we're storing those into the actor's private data. For initialization of the actor core, 
I'm also setting an empty string array to the list item names of the list box. The next thing we're doing is registering our events. So I have one user event for shutting down this actor. I'm then registering two other events based on the sub panel reference for shortcut menu activation. So when I right click on the sub panel, even another event. So when I actually select one of the tags in that right click menu. If then we're on to the main event itself, the actor core, and then our event based helper loop. Let's have a quick recap of our software architecture and then talk about how the sub panels fit into this. So the launcher VI is going to be launching a chat room server and I'm showing all of the actor cores on the screen here. The chat room server is going to then launch our new sub panel user interface, which we see here. It's also going to launch chat window models and it can launch a dynamic number of these chat window models. Even each of those models launches a user interface. And this is the user interface that we've seen in previous videos. So the way that sub panels work is that the sub panel needs a reference to a VI. And dependent on which VI reference has been inserted into the sub panel will determine which front panel you see in the sub panel. With this in mind, there are essentially two ways of getting a VI into a sub panel. The first way is we could share the sub panel reference with all of our user interfaces. So all of those user interfaces could essentially insert themselves into the sub panel. The second and most preferred route by far is for all of those individual user interfaces. So the individual chat window instances in this case to share their VI reference to the sub panel. So we're going to send messages from the individual UIs to the sub panel as opposed to the other way around. To implement that in this architecture, I've had to implement two abstract messages. So one abstract message to send a VI reference of the actor core for the chat window interface up to the chat window model and then a second abstract message to send that reference from the chat window model up to the server. And then we have a standard actor framework message to send that reference from the server down to the user interface with the sub panel. So that's three different messages that we now need to create. In the project explorer, we can see where I've created these messages. So our first abstract message for caller is going from the chat window UI. So we can see UI panel launched. And if we look at the class data for this message, you'll see I'm sending a VI refnum, so a reference to that VI and the name. That's going to be overridden by the chat window model. So if we go to messages for this actor, we have new panel launched. The do VI is then going to execute. And that's actually going to relay the message back up to its calling actor. And we can see another abstract message here. That abstract message, again, we can see that in the abstract messages for caller, see new UI reference message. This abstract message is going to be overridden by the server. So in the server, we have a message here called uh, new reference received. And then the do method for this VI is actually going to send a standard message back down to the sub panel UI. And again, notice how we're keeping that VI refnum and the name. So we're relaying the individual VI refnums and their names from the chat windows over our architecture to the sub panel window. Now let's clear some of those up using Control Shift W. And if we head over to the sub panel user interface, we have a message for this actor, which is add new user interface. If we have a look at this method, you'll see on the block diagram, I'm I'm creating a register of these items. So the UI and name come in, 
I'm adding that name to a register, i.e. that list box. So I just append it to the bottom of the list using these property nodes. I'm then adding that UI reference to another register. And I've actually encapsulated this register into a separate class. That separate class I've called UI reference wrapper, where I have functions such as add new user interface reference, delete user interface reference, and get reference. If we have a look inside this VI, I'm adding that VI reference and the alias to an array. And to improve the user experience, as soon as a new reference is added to this register, I'm going to change the sub panel so it always displays the latest sub panel that was added. And of course, that could change for your own applications. But the way I'm implementing that here is by using the method called new panel selected. And in this panel, I'm looking in that register. So remember, I encapsulated that VI reference into a class. So I'm getting that reference out of that register and inserting it into the sub panel, remembering to remove the previous VI from that sub panel. And then to update the title bar at the top of the user interface, I'm generating a user event to send the name of the sub panel that's inserted up to that top title bar so the user knows what they're looking at. So I've just been through how we can send messages from those individual user interfaces to the sub panel user interface. In then we add them to the registers. So by adding them to the chat window register or this list box here, the user can choose which VI they want to show. In there we have a sub panel here. And again, we looked at how we can insert that reference into the sub panel itself. What I'm gonna go through now is, okay, what happens when the user right clicks? It then goes into pop out window. So we can achieve this functionality. Well, let's close this application and head over to the actor core. So to implement the right click functionality, I needed to register another two events. The first event was to look at shortcut menu activation. The second was shortcut menu selection. The shortcut menu activation event is this event case here. And if we head over to the method that executes, and I'm going to actually use one of the tools I put into my lab view environment. So I can right click and open method. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Here, I'm going to have a look at that right click menu item. I'm going to delete all the right click options and just add in a new menu item if there is a sub panel inserted. So if the inserted VI is a valid reference, I'm going to display pop out window and the tag is going to be pop. When the user then clicks on pop out window, this event case will execute. So let's have a look at the method. Now this is a bit more complicated. In this method, I'm going to be clearing those registers. So the chat selector window, which is this panel down here, we need to remove that line item. So we're going to get the item names. If then this is the delete from array function, and we delete that line item before rewriting that array to the list box. At the bottom, we're removing that VI. In there, we're opening that VI's front panel. In the center here, is going to delete that VI reference and output an index of where that reference lives in the array. This is actually quite a special VI. This is a malleable VI. And I actually created a malleable VI because I didn't know whether I was going to enter a string to try and match some aliases or enter a VI reference to match that VI reference to an array of references or enter an index. So if we have a look at the block diagram, if you haven't seen a malleable VI like this before, don't worry. If you want a video on malleable VIs, let me know in the comments. But essentially a malleable VI is a polymorphic VI. It allows you to put in different data types and based on those data types, different functionality will execute. For example, in this instance, if a numeric is put in, I'm going to assume it's an index 
so I can index this register and delete that line item. Else, let's say a VI reference goes in. A VI reference comes in here. I match that VI reference with the register and then I delete that line item. And the same is true for the string here. But again, let me know if you would like a more detailed video about malleable VIs. Let me know in the comments. So this is how I'm keeping track of that register. I'm deleting the line items from that list box. I'm deleting the VI reference from that register. I'm removing that VI from the sub panel. Even using the VI refnum, I'm opening that VI front panel. In this video, we had to look through the overall architecture and sending messages with these references from one side of the architecture over to the other side so we could display all of the actor core front panels into a single sub panel. I talked you through how we could add VI references to the sub panel itself, how we could remove them and even pop out the windows themselves. I hope this video was useful. Please like, comment and subscribe. Please leave any feedback and as always I'll leave a link to the code in the description as well as the right click menu item I showed you earlier to open up the method from the actor framework message itself. Cheers, catch you next time.